Annie got married to John Macy, who was a literary character at Harvard at the time when Helen was there at Radcliffe, and it was an unsuccessful marriage. And there were letters from Helen written when she and Annie were on the road. There are letters that exist where Helen is typing on her typewriter on hotel stationery, but she's typing across all the print of the stationery, so you can hardly read what she's, because she doesn't know the print is there. She has just a piece of paper. And in those, she says, John is getting tired of the struggle. And I guess it was a struggle. And anyway, the marriage broke up, and it broke Annie's heart. And uh, strangely enough, this is really weird, John then had a second marriage and he married a deaf, blind, mute sculptress. Isn't that weird? Anyway, Annie suffered and had a very depressed latter part of her life and Helen wished that Annie had the comfort of religion Helen became, a, I think, a Kierkegaardian or something, some Swedenborgian, I don't know, some type of religious, some type of Christianity, which I'm not familiar with. And uh, Annie was a, what she called a lapsed Catholic. That is, she became a secular thinker. She lost all her religious consolation and uh, was very depressed. Well, it seemed to me that that, that part of the story had to be, ought to be told, too. And that's why I wrote Monday After the Miracle, which was a flop. I just have a card out there from Jane Alexander. <clears throat> uh, I, don't, I don't think that was, uh, that wasn't, I don't myself believe that I solved the problem that I set myself, but it was a flop anyway, because nobody wanted to see that that, the, the success of the miracle worker is predicated partly on the fact that it's a comedy. It's basically, you know, in my classical definition, it's a comedy. And nobody wanted to see that there was any kind of a tragic aftermath. I was the only one who wanted to make that point.